We've got some really interesting people right in front of us. Great opportunity to learn whether you're an influencer wanting to know how to work with brands of this caliber, or whether you're a brand that aspires to be as innovative as these people on this stage. I think, let's start, let's start with the, probably the biggest business on the stage, Samsung over here, Mr. biggest guy on stage as well, Volcan. Um, now, <laughs> The, th the thing I think about when I see a lot of influencer content and influencer marketing is that over the past four or five years, you know, there's been a lot of, um, you know, merging into one homogenous blob of influence. You know, like, what, what, what does it make to, uh, what does it take to make me push myself further down the, con uh, the customer decision journey? And like, how do you differentiate at Samsung to make that experience uh, different? Yeah. So as a Samsung, as you said, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, we are heavily, hugely investing to the influencer marketing, especially. But influencer marketing is transforming, as all the world is transforming, because influencer marketing is not only the brand equity or the brand reputation, or including this, uh, it's also the, uh, with the, together with the data, data driven. So if you are evaluating and reporting and optimizing your data very well, so you can expose your own marketing communication through influencers very, uh, very efficient way. So the Samsung is going to be the making the differentiation point of view of influencer marketing communication is the data driven. So th they're helping us to drive our performance also, including with our brand reputation. So let's unpackage that a little bit. Data driven, we hear that a lot in this room. Yeah. What does data driven mean? What kind of KPIs are we looking at? And you know, is it, is it impressions? Is it you know, the, the, the more, more old school metrics? Are we looking at the, the, the share of voice and so on? What, what are we looking at? Actually, we are looking for the real metrics. Okay. So as you, all the marketers know that, we have the four steps of the customer decision journey. Awareness, concentration, and purchase intent, and the retention. So every touch points and lines of the marketing that we are driving, that we are uh, looking for the different KPIs and the different KPI sets. So in the awareness part, as you said, the impression and the reach is very important, but in the purchase intent, you have to convert your customers to directly through your own offline and online uh, the platforms, the sales uh, platforms. So we, we are tracking all the steps with our own global partners, such as Facebook and the Google uh, internal tools to drive the best uh, influencer marketing, influence, influencive marketing through these guys. So the key metrics that we are driving is not only the impressions, we are also looking for the loyalty side, that we, how we can uh, retain, increase the retention of the rate for the Samsung. And quickly before we move on, um, what does, how do you measure that loyalty intent? How do you measure that uh, retention? Actually, we have the own uh, loyalty program, Samsung members. So if the people just buy the Samsung products, so you can be a member of this program. So you can, we can be follow up all these guys through our data platforms and the loyalty program. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And so, one, one thing that I'm curious about, I'm sure a lot of people in here, is MasterCard. You know, it's not something that I would, would associate with an influencer program so much because people are quite private about their finances. Maybe some influencers, not so much. But, you know, people like myself, we like to keep that, those decisions to ourselves. You're operating in a world where, you know, we've got Monzo, Revolut, and N26 are coming in with these innovative fintech solutions. How are you differentiating um, your influencer marketing in, in that sector? First of all, let me start with saying we're a technology company, yeah. <laughs> not a finance company, but we are a technology company that happens to be in payment sector. Yeah. And we are mostly known for our Blewitt uh, prices campaign that's been going on for 20 years now, more than 20 years over you know, 110 countries and uh, translated into more than 50 languages. So you, we are more than a payments uh, provider, I, I should say. But obviously, uh, as the times change, we have changed as a company. Our consumers have changed. And the expectation from us has changed as well. So our campaign has evolved. And from one way, communication from just like observing priceless moments that you may have as a consumer. I think that's what you're also referring to. We have evolved into making those prices experiences with you. So enabling you to have your own prices journeys and experiences, start your something priceless, whatever that would be. So for us, influencer marketing comes in that that part, really, because rather than this static one-way 
you know, just like one way of uh, communicating, we want to enable you, we want to create connections for you so that you have your experiences and it could be only for you. So here comes the social media and the influencers because we hope and believe they help us to create these connections, trust, trusted connections. So it will be instrumental from now on even more. I mean, for the past few years, we've been doing some work with influencers, but we are not like totally abandoning the traditional mix, of course. Uh, but we, we, we believe we can, you know, start a new journey in that sense. This, this journey that you're speaking of, what does that look like in five years' time? What is the future of your influencer program? How can the influencers in this room future-proof their offering? And how can the brands learn from, from your direction? You know, for us, the influencers gives us some unique moments. Uh, I told you, it's about connections. So it's different than the traditional media. But I really uh, have to say, we will keep the traditional mix in the place, so we won't be totally abandoning it. We still need commercials to convey some of our messages. But to bring authenticity, to bring uh, some unique content, in our case, that's prices, of course, <laughs> to have some prices content, we will continue to do so. But for us, influencing or influencers are not about the numbers game. So microblogging, may become even more important. The genuine content, the ability to influence influencers, even if you don't have like millions that follow you. So that will be key. So we think the trend will move more to quality over quantity. And really, I, I, I personally also see microblogging as a a good opportunity for all of us. Excellent. And uh, from a spend perspective, are we um, expecting to increase spend on influencers over the next five years or is it going to plateau? What does that look like? Naturally, for me, it will increase yeah. because this is where our consumers want to be. Yeah. I mean, that's for sure. Many of our consumers have ad blockers. So in order to avoid that, Obviously, we have to find new creative, smart ways, priceless ways to overcome those barriers. And influencers, if they can provide unique content, if they're like genuine, authentic, I think they will really have more piece of the cake. I mean, that's like no brainers at a. At Listen point. to that, guys. You're the answer to ad blockers. You're the ad smashers. You can take that one yeah. with it, you know. Um, but speaking of um, priceless moments, I think that takes us really nicely on to the hotel experience. I've been fortunate enough to experience the Four Seasons. Inflow have put us up in the, um, the Fairmont Hotel. Two incredible venues that, you know, everything's Instagrammable, everything's aesthetic, everything's a priceless moment that you want to share with your friends and your connections. Omar, can you tell us a bit about how you work in the hotel industry to make the most of those moments and get the uh, best you know, visibility on, on your um, venues? Yes, um, actually, uh, a few years ago, it was all uh, inviting the bloggers and, and they were basically setting up some shots of a typical breakfast table with a coffee and a croissant and a and fruit plate and then uh, try to get people uh, enjoy that all around the world. Um, I think uh, the social media is, uh, for me, is transferring emotions on the eye of the blogger. And in that aspect, uh, most bloggers, when they come to the hotels, they don't even know what the hotel services are. It has to look natural, because that's the uh, authenticity of the experience. But uh, I think hoteliers, uh, whatever brands are, uh, they have to create the stage experiences to just to make sure that what is happening, whether it's a cooking school, whether it's a spa treatments, whether, whatever the activities in the hotel. So they need to prepare in advance, not just let the blogger, hey, here's the hotel, experience it on your eyes, but so give something directly. There's an education piece there. It so is. Like and also, <clears throat> the world has changed. Hotels are important, but destinations are more important. So what, what's happening is how that hotel or the blogger sees that destination, it actually touches to the consumer more, the potential guests more. So if I'm going to go to Paris, I want to, if I'm expecting something from Paris, but I want to also learn about, not only about hotel, 
how would I, my experience turn out to be in the eye of that hotel and the blogger? So it's a little bit more complex than just taking a, a photo of the room or the restaurant or the buffet. It, it is becoming much more complex. And so do you, do you ever collaborate with the, the kind of cities, the tourist boards when you're working with influencers or do you kind of uh, work separately to attain these goals? Um, uh, most of the time, the hotels that we own, whether it's Peninsula, whether it's uh, Raffles, uh, we own many brands, uh, and we operated under with, with those brands. Uh, hotels have different ways of dealing with it. But we, uh, we've been involved with Inflow, for example, in this case, and we have some conventions has taken place in Doha or in Switzerland, our latest resort, Birkenstock in Luzern. Uh, we find it uh, gathering some professional people uh, under one umbrella is working for us is better than dealing with it individually all the time. So this, this is your ideal, ideal event then? Exactly. Excellent. And just before we move on, um, one thing that seems to me like a glaring obvious thing to talk about is not everybody that follows you know, PewDiePie or follows their favorite um, influencer can afford to stay at one of your hotels. So how do you select somebody that's more relevant for bottom line metrics and actual conversions? This is a very key point. I mean, we have hotels are averaging net room rate of 12, 1300 euro a night. So how do you, when somebody comes into the hotel and say, look, I have 20 million followers, but the 20 million followers, maybe the 90% the, the, the doesn't have a passport. So how do you define that to the beneficial to the hotel? So it's a win-win case. I think each case is its own uh, understanding, but there is not a, today a software explains to you, to the hotels, this is the way the dem demographics works, this is their spending power, uh, it needs a, a analysis, and you want to make sure that you also present your hotel into the right market, what you want, which segment you want. So uh, it's analyzed by the sales and marketing departments of each hotel, but it has a big debate because hotels uh, get 10 requests per week yeah. and therefore you need to pick and choose the one that is most beneficial and meaningful. Yeah, absolutely and that's a good point, you know, uh, a lot of the platforms, Snapchat, Instagram um, and so on, they have limited APIs for this analysis work. So whilst you can get better demographics in, in, uh, across Twitter and so on, um, actually getting the, the demographics analysis uh, on a third party basis for the other platforms is much more, much more difficult in, ver in verifying that. So it's a, it's a common challenge and hopefully there'll be some people in this room working on that challenge. Now, to flip it over to the other side of the, the travel industry, we've got, you know, this, these iconic glamorous venues that, you know, everything's Instagrammable, but then we've got the more functional operational side of selling people the, the flights and the, and, the, um, and the travel side of things with Skyscanner. <coughs> How do we go about creating, you know, Im impactful content with influencers that will engage their audience rather than just being a, a paid placement? Of course. Um, so one of the new things that we've just launched uh, in the past year is uh, what we call branded content uh, within Skyscanner. Uh, so what is branded content really? Um, we work with influencers uh, as well as with other brands such as DMOs and airlines in order to create native content on site and also off site. Uh, this allows us to make sure that we're serving the right um, content in the right context at the right time to our users. And as all the speakers have mentioned, data is a huge part of this. So what we do is we have audience segments uh, created by the data that we have um, generated through Skyscanner search, uh, along with also using data from um, platforms like Facebook and Twitter uh, to find out um, who our right audience is and make sure that we tap uh, into their minds at the right time. Great, and how do you, once you've tapped into their minds at the right time, how, how do you convince me to go with uh, Skyscanner instead of you know, a competitor when it's a very price sensitive uh, industry you play in? Of course, so one of the things to remember is we're a price comparison meta search. So we are a travel site that compares flights, hotels and car hire. So we're actually partner agnostic. So we try to provide the best service to our end user. And in anything that we do, uh, from marketing to product, uh, we're traveler first. So 
Uh, in terms of that, uh, we keep the travel at the heart of everything that we create uh, in order to make sure that they're actually happy with the things that they see um, on site. Um, so for us to be able to do that, uh, we work in a funnel uh, method. So we start with the dreaming and inspiration phase. Uh, we look at the users, and one of the most used um, functions of Skyscanner, maybe, I'm, I'm actually pretty sure um, everyone in this room has used it at least once, is our everywhere search. So you can just tap in and see where you can go. Uh, and it will search the whole world and uh, tell you the best prices uh, for your flight tickets. And then from that inspiration and dreaming phase, we try to move users down into the funnel uh, in order to, um, for them to start planning their trips. Uh, within that planning phase, this is where the branded content comes in. So we try to sway their opinion from going to destination A to destination B, or choosing airline A um, to B, or another brand from A to B as well. Um, and then right at the end of the funnel is the activation part. So um, we try to get them to book uh, the most convenient price point, um, timetable, uh, and everything like that for them as well. Great, and so, so when, you're, when you're looking for an influencer to work with in the same way we're talking about for Katara, um, how, how does your ideal influencer maybe um, look differently from your, um, your partner influencers like the hotels and the, the airlines themselves? Sure, um, so we have two ways of doing this. Um, so within Skyscanner, we work in a squadified form which means that uh, for every market, uh, we have a localized squad. Uh, that means that every single one of our social media accounts are actually localized uh, per market. Uh, this allows us to, um, as I said, serve the right content to the right people. Uh, and within that, our localized teams go out and have a look at, okay, who are our influencers in this market? Who can we work with? Uh, who is the best person for us to, uh, you know, um, talk about this message that we have. And is that process manual, uh, or is that an automated data-driven process? That uh, it's a bit of both. Um, so we have uh, the manual process, so I'm really happy to be here and uh, meet all of you today as well. So we go to events like these to um, tap into new um, sort of influencers, meet them, talk to them about what they do, as well as we have our own ambassador program, uh, which you can find out through, through our website as well. Uh, where you can sign up and let us know what you do. And from that database, we're also able to automatically uh, see which influencer we can work with as well. Excellent. So, yeah. I'm at full. There we go. We're getting, beautiful, we're getting chucked beautiful. off. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much for yes. your time. Yes. Thank you to the fab five marketeers here. Give us a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the insider thank you info. Thank you.